One simple rule to learn anything new. Welcome, this is Yaz.life and my name is Yaz. Learning to walk and stand on our own two feet is probably up there as one of the most difficult things many of us have ever had to learn to do. I know not many of us talk about it and we don't think back that far, but you know what? We really, really should. I mean, there's the creeping stage where we're dragging ourselves around on our bellies, using our arms. I mean, wow, that's one hell of a skill. Then there's the crawling stage and then the stepping stage, the pulling up stage. And then there's just the standing and wobbling. And finally, after all of that, finally comes the walking stage, albeit the falling walking stage. This process can take anything from 12 months to 24 months of determination, of strength training, of visualizing, of mindfulness, and so, so much patience. Now, most of us have very little to no memory of how we conquered such a huge task and live to tell the tale. Such a momentous achievement. Without memory, without plan, that must mean we didn't make a plan. It must mean that there were no graphs or tracking apps, no comparison to how your mates at nursery or Jack next door is doing and whether you're keeping up with them or whether you're failing miserably. There was no overthinking. I mean, we don't hear kids telling us how this walking malarkey just isn't for them or that they are failures because Aunt Angie saw them fall on their backsides and she smiled. Or they don't go off and decide they're just not good enough to walk and so give up the pursuit. Do we? No. So why is it that we, as children, after numerous, numerous embarrassing falls, painful face plants, and sometimes even having to visit the hospital for stitches, why is it that we're still able to go on and learn to walk without any long-term effect on our ability to succeed? Why is it that when we grow up and become adults, learning something new seems considerably easier said than done? We crumble under the pressure, we imagine the worst case scenario and perceive everything that could possibly go wrong. We play out a two hour visually spectacular movie in our heads of exactly how it will all fall apart and then we give up without even starting in some occasions. Concluding that it was because we lacked discipline, willpower, or that we were naturally predisposed to being lousy at it and so that there was no point. In some cases, we even write up a 10,000 word thesis detailing hundreds of reasons, hundreds of justifications as to why it was not achievable and then publishing it onto Facebook just in case there's anyone that thinks that you were lazy or undisciplined, just to get them straight on that. Wow, what a huge step back we've taken since learning to walk. One of the simplest ways to understand how this may have happened is to highlight the fact that when we were born, we were born feeling and not thinking. Learning a language enables us to think, and if we can think, then the likelihood is that we can speak. Feelings, on the other hand, are innate. We do not learn to feel, although we do need to learn to manage our feelings in healthier ways, yes, but we do not need to learn how to feel. Our feelings drive and motivate us unconsciously. They drive us to crave food. They drive us for sustenance and warmth, for love. And they drove us to learn to walk. You didn't make a conscious decision to learn to walk. You felt it. You saw others around you doing it, and so you wanted to do it too. Really, it was as simple as that. As adults, on the other hand, we are conditioned more and more to think rather than to feel, and so this inevitably leads us to overthink and underfeel. Voila, there's the issue. Let's take a look at the four stages that becoming familiar with will enable us to make learning anything new considerably easier. I'm going to use the same example of learning how to drive. The first stage is unconsciously incompetent. This is the stage where we're watching others driving and thinking, yeah, this is really cool. I want to do that. And we're seeing the benefits of such endeavors. We relate this to our lives and we're like, yes, yes, do you know what? I think it's definitely time for me to learn to drive. And so we decide this is exactly what we want to go off and do. Personally, I used to watch my mum drive quite a bit. She would take us to school and pick us up every day. 
My mum was a very confident driver and she really, actually, she really enjoyed it. Uh, she was also a very safe driver, yet she took calculated risks. She was happy to drive on the motorway. Uh, we would go for five, six hour drives up to the countryside. These experiences most definitely played a part in my motivation to want to learn to drive. So it is at this stage that I have no idea whether I will be able to become a competent driver. So I am unconsciously incompetent. The next stage is when we become consciously incompetent. So this is the stage where we take our first driving lesson. We buckle up our seatbelt, we adjust our mirrors, we're listening to the instructor yapping away next to us. We are eagerly, eagerly waiting to get started. The adrenaline is coursing through our veins, the heart is pumping, we turn the key. Start the engine and then rev it, just a couple of times. The left foot goes down onto the clutch. Yes, it's a manual. The handbrake goes down. The right foot is quivering as it presses down on the accelerator for the first time and bang. We're thrust forwards in our seats, the jerk of the clutch coming up too quickly and the engine stalls. Ouch, a big, big blow to our egos. It's at this point that we have just become consciously incompetent. Damn, I can see this is gonna be tough. The third stage is consciously competent. So this is the stage where we've done all our driving lessons, we've gone off and we've passed our test. Yay! And we are in the infancy of becoming the confident, unperturbed drivers we had envisaged ourselves to be. We must still remind ourselves every time we drive to mirror, signal and maneuver. We are highly concerned still about tight spaces, actually pretty fearful. And we're petrified of roundabouts and motorways, highways. The music needs to be low enough so that we can still concentrate and focus and we know not to take our eye off the road, even for a millisecond. Otherwise, it could all end pretty badly. It's at this stage that we can drive. We are competent, but we must be conscious at all, if not most of the time, as it not yet become a habitual conditioned activity for us. We are consciously competent. The fourth stage is unconsciously competent. This is the stage where, for example, we awake to find we've missed the alarm. We are so totally late for work. We jump into the car without any makeup, hair all over the place, and we put our foot down. We get to work by the skin of our teeth. We run straight to the bathroom thinking, God, I really need to sort myself out. And unbeknown to us, we look back at our reflection to see that the hair is fixed. The makeup is done and we are looking pretty presentable. At that point, the eyebrow raises and come to think of it, I don't even remember how I got here. It's at this stage that driving has become so habitual for us that we don't even remember the journey in, the hair, the makeup, let alone the infancy of mirror, signal and manoeuvre. I am now unconsciously competent. I don't even need to think about it anymore. I can just do it. The same as we brush our teeth in the morning, the same as we go to the bathroom, and the same as we can even make our breakfast without even realising. As you probably already know, our brain's neuroplasty enables us to learn new things as often as we would like. What we tend to forget is that there are some key skills and attributes that all of us are going to need to get us there. So in order to learn to drive, one would need patience as stalling the car is really not going to be a one-off and accidents, they're going to happen. One would need focus and concentration as there's a hell of a lot of multitasking going on. One would also need to practice. One would need energy, time and knowledge and not forgetting money. Without these elements, the chances of success do fall considerably. The one simple rule to learning anything new is the awareness of the four key stages. Focusing on them will enable us to work patiently within them not judging or making our progress or even lack of it mean anything negative. We really do not need to compare ourselves to others as we're all unique and we will get there. Working through the stages in the end, regardless of creed, color, race or religion, it's only a matter of having the resources needed, being mindful of the stages of learning and ultimately utilizing or developing the key skills needed to succeed. 
exactly the same stuff you needed when you learned to walk. If you could do that then, then just imagine what you can achieve today, as it really isn't going to get much tougher than that. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful and want to help me create more, then please do spare a minute and pop on over to patreon.com. If you've got any questions or opinions that you'd like to share, please do pop them in the comments section below. Part six of the Psycho Vlogs will be coming soon, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and press that bell button so you don't miss a thing.